How large is infinity? So what is infinity? Does it make you think of an impossibly large number? Or maybe the vast distances across space? One definition given by the Cambridge English Dictionary is a number that is larger than all other numbers. But the thing that takes most people by surprise is that there are actually different sizes of infinity. Before we start looking at these different sizes of infinity, it will be useful to learn what a bijection is. Imagine there is a shepherd who lets his sheep out into the field each day to play and then collects them back again at the end of the day. Now, unfortunately, this shepherd is enumerate and doesn't understand the concept of numbers, hence can't count his sheep back in. What can he do to ensure that he hasn't lost any sheep during the day? He decides that for each sheep he lets into the field, he will put a pebble into a bucket. He does this until all the sheep are in the field. At the end of the day, he then collects the sheep back again, this time removing a pebble for each sheep returned. If he runs out of pebbles, this means he has got all of his sheep back. If he has spare pebbles, then he is missing some sheep. The shepherd has created a bijection between the pebbles and the sheep. This means each sheep matches up with exactly one pebble and vice versa. If we have a bijection, we therefore have two groups of exactly the same size. This will be important later. Let's start our look at infinity with a basic set, the set of natural numbers, also known as the counting numbers. This is the set of all whole numbers larger than zero. We can see that this set has infinite size because for any number in the set, no matter how large, we can add one to it and create another number in the set. Contained within the natural numbers are two more sets, the positive even numbers and the positive odd numbers. Now you would think that as each of these sets contains half of the natural numbers, they should be half the size of n. But is this the case? We can start by comparing the natural numbers with their even numbers. For each natural number, we can match it to the even number that is twice as big. So one matches to two, two matches to four, three to six, four to eight, and so on. In algebra terms, we are matching n to 2n each time. This creates a bijection. Each number in n is matched to exactly one number in e, and vice versa. Therefore, the natural numbers and the even numbers are the same size. With a slight tweak, we can also create a bijection between the natural numbers and the odd numbers, meaning that these are also the same size as each other. We use the word cardinality to describe the size of a set. So the cardinality of the set A, B, C is three. The cardinality of a set of playing cards is 52, as there are 52 cards in a set. Now, as there are an infinite number of natural numbers, we need a symbol to denote this infinity. We say that the cardinality of the natural numbers, and hence the even and the odds as well, is Aleph naught, which uses the Hebrew symbol Aleph. We've looked at the cardinality of the natural numbers, but what about all rational numbers? These are all the numbers that can be written as a fraction, a over b, where a and b are whole numbers. For example, a half and seven thirds are rational, and pi isn't. To start with, let's just look at positive rational numbers. If we write all of the natural numbers in a row, in the second row, we can then write all of the fractions with a 2 on the bottom, which have not already appeared in the first row. For example, we don't need to write 2 over 2, as this equals 1, which already appears in the first row. We do the same for thirds, for quarters, and so on. This way, we can list all of the positive rational numbers. Now, it's possible to trace a path through these numbers by using diagonals, which must hit each number exactly once. And this looks like this. By numbering each step of the path with a natural number, we can create a bijection between the positive na rational numbers and the natural numbers. Again, a minor tweak can create a bijection between the natural numbers and all rationals, so the cardinality of the rational numbers is also Aleph naught. We call sets 
with cardinality aleph naught countably infinite. And what about the real numbers? We have irrational numbers, which are all the numbers that cannot be written as a fraction, with whole numbers, so for example pi, root 2, or e. The real numbers is the set of all the rational numbers and irrational numbers put together. Now to work this out, we're going to start by trying to create a bijection between the natural numbers and the real numbers between 0 and 1. We can start by assuming that we can create a list of all irrational numbers between 0 and 1. If we can create this list, then a bijection exists with the natural numbers. If not, then no bijection exists. We write all the numbers out as such, where a1, a2, etc. represent the digits in each decimal place. We can now create a new number, 0.x1, x2, x3, x4, and so on, where x1 doesn't equal a1, x2 is not equal to b2, x3 is not equal to c3, and so on. As this new number differs from each number in our original list in at least one decimal place each time, it can't be contained in our original list. This means, by contradiction, it's therefore impossible to list all of the irrational numbers between 0 and 1. Therefore, no bijection exists, and the sets are different sizes. We call this the diagonal argument due to our chosen digits forming a diagonal on the diagram, as you can see in red. Now if the subset of real numbers between 0 and 1 is larger than the natural numbers, then so must the whole set of real numbers. We call the cardinality of the real numbers Aleph 1. This is larger than Aleph 0. Interestingly, the cardinality of the complex numbers with their imaginary part is also Aleph 1. And another interesting corollary beyond the scope of this video is that there are also an infinite number of Alephs of different sizes. An infinity of infinities, if you like.